Hey, good afternoon, Madeira Companies, and welcome to our town hall of the Madeira Companies. I'm Dave Gillis, CEO of Madeira, and I've got with me one of our founding partners, Dave Marcinkowski. Um, hopefully you enjoyed the little um, PowerPoint slide that was up to lead off the call, sort of puzzle pieces, and that's really what we're putting together here at the Madeira Companies. And at times, I think we're asked, even at our levels, you know, how, how are you piecing all these things together and why are you piecing all these <laughs> things together? And so I think we're going to lead off this call really picking Dave's uh, brain a bit on the vision for the Madeira companies as a whole, kind of how we see those things uh, fitting together, why, they're, why, we, why we believe they're synergistic, mm -hmm. and just kind of an overall vision. We'll come back then and kind of step through the five companies with some of our, uh, I would say, highlights of the year so far, uh, what we see going forward for the rest of the year and, and beyond, um, and uh, celebrate a little bit in that section. And then I'll have Rodney Cates join me as we go through uh, getting ready for our next all-employee survey that's done by Swift Bunny, and we'll walk through a little bit of last year getting us prepared for next year as well. So with that, I'm gonna kick it over to, to Dave to help us uh, at least put the, the exterior on the puzzle. There you go. So, I mean, to kind of summarize what you said, this should be a very informal, we're trying to be inf inf informational for people to kind of pick up on what's going on, where we've been, where we're going. Um, so you, one of the things you said is like, how do you put all these pieces together? And I'll quickly answer by saying, I have no idea. It seems like every day is an adventure in our world. Uh, but, but but I think the point I'd like to try to paint, or the picture I'd like to paint for this group is, we're, we used to be Madeira Residential, we used to be this, we're this real estate company that, you know, does a really good job uh, at, at buying apartments, fixing, at time fixing them up, now we're getting into some other things. Over time, as we've evolved as a company, um, we've opened the door to building out what we think is, is what we call a platform, which is this kind of, you know, I, I compare it to like, Apple or the Google Play Store of real estate. I don't even think that it, you can even say that we're just in apartments anymore. We're in a number of different areas around real estate. But as you look at these pieces, as they come together, they, there is a lot of synergy there. And, you know, I want to start, I want to kind of point out, you know, we purposely left off a lot of pieces. The puzzle's not complete. Um, and the point there is, is that this isn't, you know, we have a bigger vision than even what we have up here. And at the end of the day, you know, we're going to fill in these pieces and, you know, guess what? The puzzle's responsive design. So when we make this puzzle, it actually expands from being a 100-piece puzzle to a 500-piece puzzle and so on. That this isn't just You're some... going to make it a three-dimensional puzzle. It'll right? be a three-dimensional. It'll be like a Rubik's Cube kind of thing. But yeah, no, I mean, that's, that's the idea. And so why do you do that? Well, I think there's a lot of reasons why. And, you know, we can kind of do it, you know, in order a little bit. But, you know, Madeira Residential to Quaxt. The driver for that was a, like just a level of frustration in a, of what was going on in technology in the multifamily world. And it started with one thing, now it's nine things. Um, but, you know, it's, as a company that has these values, Christ, community, and Kenai, you know, focusing on Kenai and community, like we have a choice. We can try to work with the existing providers and get solutions that we think make sense, not only for us, but for our industry or we can kind of go do it ourselves. And the culture that exists in the multifamily space was dominated by a bunch of providers that quite frankly could care less about being collaborative, um, care less about this community view, uh, care less about Kanai. They weren't even really interested in kind of creating new technologies. They just kind of wanted to stay stagnant and, and, and be comfortable with that, which as, a, as an entrepreneur, that's an opportunity. Well, and, and from, from my perspective, I think most of them were building something to then be sold. So they really weren't looking to the end game, or they, or their end game was much shorter than our end game. Correct. Which didn't align with where we wanted to go. Listen, I'm going to be, we're going to be, I'm 52 years old. I hope I get to work, do this for another 52 years. Um, it's a, it's a journey. It's a marathon. This isn't a, hey, let's build something, sell it, maybe go do it again, or go sit in a beach somewhere. Like I have personally have a ton of passion. Like I get up in the morning and I'm fired up because literally. Every day is a new adventure, uh, and that's exciting. I get to come to work with incredible people, um, people that I get to see here every day, and then people I get to you know see when I get to be in my properties or Christmas parties and things like that. But at the end of the day, 
we have this incredible team that we get to kind of pull together and say, hey, this is who we are, this is what we're trying to do. And, and that team really is the collective Madeira companies because we're right. every day drawing on the talents from each of those different organizations to help us solve problems. It may be a Quex problem, it may be a Madeira problem, and we're dragging in the Viva folks to help us or the Rockwood folks to help us or the title folks, select title folks. It's, it's really fun to watch the problem solving really encompass all of those companies. And as we go through some of the things that each of those companies are doing, it'll start to come and make yeah. perfect sense. Well, you have, you have people from Madera who now work for Quax. You have Quax people who lean into Madera really hard. That was, we, we talk about this all the time. I mean, Madera is the sandbox for Quax. It's like, we try to come up with solutions and we wanna, we wanna make sure that they work great at Madera before we ever take them out to the market. But the goal is to take them out to the market. And so it's easy to see Madera to Quax, I think, if you're thinking it through, then you're like, okay, what came next? Let's select title really came next. Um, and that really wasn't like by design. Like we have a relationship with a local guy, Brad Elder, who's our partner on Select, and, and he reached out to us because we're doing a lot of title insurance work. And so we just started down this path of asking some questions. And as, as we realized, hey, this is not only a good opportunity for us um, to, to, to get into a field that you know, we're kind of familiar with, it also sort of fits into what we're doing. There are some things within Quax that technology ideas that ultimately we think could transfer over to title insurance. At the same time, as it relates to Madera, we have a lot of friends in the industry. It's one of the reasons that we've been able to do so well, I think, in terms of finding deals or these relationships. Bringing a title, solu title insurance solution not only provides um, the potential for to select title to grow, but it also provides a service back to our friends and sort of connects us, makes it kind of sticky between some of these relationships. And so it was an easy transition. And the reason it's an easy transition is it's really the people. I mean, title insurance especially is the people, but that culture fits our culture. It was you just when we went out and we actually got to meet people, we're like, you know what? This feels like Madeira. And it was an easy decision to make. But it's important not to lose sight that that was that, that's still by design. It still fits into this bucket that we're doing. And I don't know if my head if Rockwood or Viva came first, but Viva was, you know, again, it was, I like to say it's a godly thing. You know, we, we've been struggling with payment providers like forever. And we had this incredible opportunity to fall in our laps here in Lubbock, Texas of being able to make a significant investment and become a majority owner of Viva first. Uh, now we have like four different companies within the Viva world, but it was, a, it was originally done for us to be able to go and um, solve our payment problems within Quax and Madero really. Um, and that's where we're going. We're not there yet, but we're, we're actively working towards that. We're gonna get there. That's, that's, that's always was the intent. It's just a process uh, like everything else that we're doing. Um, but now we've got these other, like a Rent Plus card where we're bringing financial service solutions to residents. Like that idea, there were pieces of that idea that existed. We were always wanting to get in and to help residents go from leasing apartments to home ownership. And what can we do to make that happen? And there were, there were roadblocks to that, that all of a sudden, wham, here's Viva First that overcame those challenges. And so again, it kind of fits into it. And then you get into Rockwood. Um, again, there's a lot of value to what we've had success in Madeira. I'm gonna stick back to our values. Community is a big one. Um, we were helping spread some rocks group out in terms of helping them understand what, what it's like to invest in multifamily. We heard, Charlie and I heard repeatedly the challenges that we knew fee management in, in our space is, is not very good. Um, and the providers that exist out there, you know, aren't very strong. Um, we didn't really want to get into that. I mean, there was actually a time where we kind of swore off we'd ever do fee management again, but this was a different deal. Um, you know, the people, you know, maybe different opinions about it um, from different people across individuals within the Rockwood portfolio. But when you look at the whole, there's some good people trying to do what we did at Madeira. And this is a way for us to give back. At the same time, it's a way for us to be able to put Quex on other properties get other feedback, the Viva, the, what we're doing with Viva, it's bringing business to Rockwood. Um, there's a number of our properties when you start talking about sales that we sold to Rockwood investors, we're able to keep our properties. There's things like as we sell properties and we have no place for staff to go, now maybe we do. Um, and then I'm gonna go as far as saying, Rockwood makes us a better organization. It is, it is allow, you know, today it probably feels like we're giving far more than we're getting back. I do believe deep down that we're going to solve that and we're going to become good at this. 
We're going to continue to be hyper selective in terms of who we're going to choose to manage for. And we've made some mistakes along the way. Um, and we've tried to rectify those as quickly as humanly possible, because this is a hard one to evaluate going into a relationship, whether or not it is or it isn't going to work. But I think for, 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 for everybody out there, I want everybody to understand, like, this isn't just some random, let's throw dart in the dart in the dark and see what we hit. This all comes together. And then I want to build on the fact that you have a lot of missing puzzle pieces. And I don't know what that looks like. I don't really have a crystal ball to say, you know, we're going to buy a company. We're going to find more Vivas or that we're going to invest heavily into. or We're going to start our own company like Quacks or Rockwood or we're going to get a select title. I don't I don't know how that is going to appear as, as we go forward exactly. But I can tell you, I expect the this puzzle to be bigger next year. I expect there to be other things on it. If it's not next year, it's the year after. But that's who we are as an organization. You know, constant and ever-ending improvement includes things like growth. It also includes things like having a big vision and living within that vision. And our vision is ultimately to be able to, pro to provide this really strong vertically integrated solution across all real estate platforms to the nation, to the world. I don't know the answer to that question, but I think the sky's the limit. And, and it'll all depend on what whether or not as we do that, can we still retain our identity within our values, attract the type of talented people that we have working for us now, keep our culture uh, in place as we expand out. The challenge with that is, is as you have more voices in it, it gets a little louder. And it requires like each of us as we're kind of going down this path to change. Um, I don't know what that means individually, everybody's different, but you know, it's hard to be status quo in our organization. Um, you can do it, um, you're not gonna advance, um, but if you, on the flip side, if you're willing to you know, grow and develop personally, if you're willing to take on challenges, if you're willing to see something that maybe is interesting to you and then go, hey, tell me more about that, um, I think you're gonna find that this is an organization that can turn into not just a job, but a career. Yeah, I agree with that. And I also would, would like to say that I, I think as an organization or set of organizations, we're gonna put a lot of effort in easing the employee effort as we go forward. So we've been trying to move a lot of stones at the same time. Soon that noise is gonna quiet a bit. We'll have other stones to go move, but not as many at the same time. Um, and you remember, I'm, I'm yeah, still around. I, I know, you, you <laughs> still have lunch with somebody new every day. And, and who knows what comes from that. If you're wondering who to blame for all this craziness, I guess I deserve some of the blame. For, I won't take all the blame for it because we have a lot of crazy people in our organization now. But I mean, truth, truth be told, I mean, um, it is an exciting time to be a part of this organization because um, there is a lot of things coming that I think is. Yeah. And, and, and but we do want to be cognizant that we know that some of this effort is is is. Um, is felt pretty heavily at, at the site level or at in your job function. And we realize that. And um, I think you'll hear as we go through this, we're, we've got funding in certain uh, uh, venues that will allow us to go get resource to help us get better at equipping you to do your job each and every day. So this is that what we're doing is hard and what every one of you are doing out there is really hard. And it probably you know it doesn't go lost that, and this this idea that the whole intent of us doing a quest or something is ultimately to make everybody's lives easier. That that is the goal, and sometimes I just want to be open and honest. It doesn't feel that way certain days. Yeah, and we we totally understand that, and we're we're working to endeavor to 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 eliminate that as best we can. Yeah, I think it's worth noting that that's the, that's the goal, not only the goal, but that's the driver. I mean, that's a part of every conversation we have is what can we do to make people's lives can, more convenient, easier, hopefully free them up time-wise to be able to do other things. Dave, I appreciate you sort of framing up or putting the edges on the puzzle for us. And it's certainly an exciting time at all of the Madera companies and can't wait to see where this puzzle ends up. With that, um, we'd like to thank you, thank all of you, our employees at each of our uh, Madeira companies. And, and if Jacob could throw up a slide, just to kind of see how far we've come really since the end of 2021 at each of our companies from a, an employee growth. And for us, this is sort of a proud moment as employees to us are number one. Um, and just to see the growth that we've had. So at the end of 2021, 2021, we were just over 500 employees. 
Today, we're at 579, so a 15% growth. And you can kind of see how that breaks down between the five different companies, uh, with Rockwood and Quest really having significant growth here in 2022 uh, as they ramp from really startups to uh, full-fledged companies. So really exciting to, to see that growth. But probably even a more proud moment for us is when we look back and we say, what 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 promotions have we had inside of our Madeira companies? Uh, and and this slide I think tells a great picture. We've had a hundred promotions into thirty five different types of positions across all of our companies. And of those hundred promotions, forty three individuals were promoted to a manager type role from a non manager role. That's just super proud for us sitting here. Yeah, no, I mean, you think about it, you go, yeah, the last slide and this slide, better than one in six people in our organization last year today got it, got promoted. Um, yeah. that's, that's exactly fantastic. what we wanted to do. It's exactly what we want. We've, we've talked about that on a number of the podcasts where we, we think we have very talented people inside the Madeira companies and we love to see those promotions happen and continue to happen. So kudos to all of y'all that were part of that hundred and kudos to the people around those hundred that helped them get to where they needed to get to. So it's awesome. Um, next, I think we'll go to Madeira Residential, and this will be kind of our last slide, and then we'll we'll kind of discuss through. But I think this is really kind of the centerpiece of the Madeira companies. Everything kind of comes from this puzzle piece out, but just the amount of effort that the Madeira residential team has gone through over the last two years. So you can see 21 sales and purchases. So we had, we had talked about 21 being nearly a billion dollars worth of acquisitions. Uh, 22 hasn't slowed down. In fact, it sped up a bit. We actually are already over 600,000 year to date. 600 million. 600 million uh, year to date with 11 properties closed. Um, and ironically, when you put the two years together, the amount of sales uh, and units sold really equate to the units that we also purchased over that period of time. Correct. Which is which is fantastic. Madeira is is our is our rock, and we'll continue to build on that. So, um, with that as the backdrop, you know, again, kudos and thank you to all of the folks out there that you know. On a, as a number, you can see the dispositions. When you're going through them, you can really feel that effort. Same with the acquisitions. I know there's a ton of work on each and every one of those. We had one today. Actually, I think we got notified just ahead of going live that we no, I closed. My phone. Did we yeah, close yeah, we Chelsea? closed uh, uh, Chelsea Museum District in Houston. Um, so kudos to you. It probably wasn't on our slide there. Well, I mean, just real quick. I mean, from my perspective, I remember you know 14 years ago when we bought our first deal. Um, I couldn't get past seeing us buying another deal, let alone, I mean, I, I think we've, we've bought and sold over 70 properties now um, as a company since then. And we're sitting here, we, we're, we're, we have the kind of, we're, we're two, over $2 billion of value of real estate that we, we now are managing or, or overseeing that we own. It, it's, it's mind boggling to think through. And, and you know what? It's not the real estate that gets you there. It's the people that get you there. And we all need to be able to hang our hats on that and feel excitement about that kind of growth because we don't do it if we're not successful. The reason that we've had this growth, quite frankly, is the fact that, you know, there are certain, our values is a big reason. I'm going to talk about that in a minute here with the JPI Waymaker deal. The other thing is, is we, we do what we say we're going to do for our investors, to our broker community, to the sellers of the world, uh, to the buyers of the world. We, you know, I think we've got a great reputation with buyers that they see our stuff and they know whatever we tell them they're going to be buying is what they're going to get. They don't get the big surprises that I think we see when we go and buy other people's deals. That's right. And when you have that, the value of our deals go up because people want those deals. And so we've been able to really just, you know, again, apply our values with our people uh, and do the right thing to get us to where we can grow to this point. And quite frankly, I don't see us slowing down. I mean, there'll be some challenges this next year with interest rates going up and, and whatnot, where you may see us kind of level out for a little bit. Um, I believe it's, a, and Charlie and I talked about it, this is a short-term gig probably. You know, we're 23, maybe a little flatter or slightly below, but it'll pick back up after that, and that's when it'll get exciting again. Yeah, and I think I think on the promotion slide, you could see a lot of that coming from the Madeira residential side as we mm -hmm. grew, as we got into different types of assets as well. Um, so, you know, besides ac acquisitions and dispositions, the teams have been busy with 
uh, launching mentor programs. Uh, shout out to Casey Kuhn and all the portfolio managers in DFW for kind of piloting that for us. And then uh, Katie Myrick and her, her team for adopting that and, and truly getting it down into the, to the grassroots. We're looking for big things for the mentor program coming out of both Dallas and Houston. We've got a ton of charity work that goes on on a quarterly basis. Hopefully folks are taking advantage of that opportunity to take PTO to go do charitable work that we instituted last year. Um, and then I, I know our teams are, because I, I see it in the reviews that we get, we are, we are consistently working as, a, as, as holistic community teams to improve our Google ratings, mm -hmm. which is super important for us, particularly as we moved up in asset class. We had several that uh, from the start of the year till now have hit that four star rating. I've tried to celebrate lunch with many of them. I still owe a few of them lunch, but I had to, I had to cut back a bit because I was gaining some weight. So, <laughs> but now I'm ready to get back out and enjoy. But um, kudos to those teams that have, have lifted themselves up from a lower ranking up to that four star and, and also to the folks that have, have always been at that four star or above for maintaining it. It's just awesome. But Madeira is also, we, we've moved up an asset class We've not abandoned other asset class, just the buying opportunities have come in the higher classes. But now we've entered into an agreement with these, these people called JPI and Waymaker. Can you walk me through that, Dave? Yeah, so um, again, through relationships and values. Um, last December, um, actually at the Dallas Christmas party, I received a phone call from a friend of mine who was the Keith Duncan, who's the founder of Waymaker. Um, and he was, he had a, a relate, he has a very strong relationship with the folks over at JPI, who I, I believe are the premier uh, multifamily builder um, in Dallas, DFW market, um, to where he was, they were looking to, they had a deal under contract and they were struggling with fundraising. And they had gone to over 80 different groups that they can uh, raise money with, uh, equity groups, and either got no's or they felt they couldn't work with. And he, you know, he and I kept in touch over the years. He, he knew about it, he, and he just called me up and said, hey, any chance you guys would look at this with us? And you know, we did. I mean, we spent a good three or four months really digging into this idea of us building apartments with JPI and Waymaker, um, two Christian-based companies, three um, that fits with us, um, looking to do the right thing, great people, it just fit. It just felt great. And the numbers made sense. And so we, we came into partnership, our three companies. Um, we closed on now four deals that are coming out of the ground in DFW right now. Yeah, um, those are in very lucrative areas. The colony. Yeah, these are going to be the nicest. These are going to be the Dallas. nicest places in the nicest parts of town. Yeah. They're going to be really amazing assets. Um, next week, I think we launched the next five. So we intend to cl close on nine apartment deals, 3,300 apartment units. Yeah. In the next two and a half, three years from now, we're going to be sitting with nine assets, um, you know, in the Madero hold. I, I never thought we'd do development. I really didn't. I mean, it was, you know, there's a lot of things, you know, I, I've learned that anytime I say I never thought we'd do something, we end up doing it. Uh, this was definitely one of those. Uh, but what's been really special is, is this relationship between our three companies. We are very closely aligned. Um, Waymaker um, takes a portion of their proceeds, 15% of their, their proceeds, go to um, Apartment Life. I think there's probably a number of people on this on this call familiar with Madero, familiar with Apartment Life. It's a great nonprofit helping uh, apartment communities uh, build community. Um, I think it's, a, it's an easy way of saying it. Um, last two weeks ago or so, JP, or Waymaker delivered a half a million dollar check to um, Apartment Life um, as it relates to what they've done so far um, in their organization. Madera has made a commitment uh, as well to Apartment Life. And so as these assets are successful, we're also going to be able to support a great nonprofit. Um, I believe that this is a long-term relationship. I believe now we, are, um, we, we aren't building anything. I don't want to give anybody the wrong impression. Our role in this is um, ultimately to, to operate them as, we, as, we, as they come online, um, but to raise the money and to provide our operational expertise of them. Um, yeah, JPI is, they're well equipped to build. Yeah, they, I, th I think they've built $16 billion worth of real yeah, estate. They, they don't, but, but it's interesting. They, they look at it from a perspective of building something to sell and be done with it. Now that we're involved from the get-go, we're bringing a perspective to them of saying, whoa, 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 we may want to hold this asset for a long time. So let's talk about how you do X. 
anything from package rooms as we've experienced them to a lot of the Quex technology as well, because traditionally they would have just skipped the technology on property because they didn't have to live with it. And they'd say, whoever's going to buy it can put whatever they want versus building it from the get-go. Yeah. So what happens now Quex is going to be on these properties. Um, so this is, an op- this is a jumping off point for us as it relates to Quex. Um, it's a great relationship. Everybody wins. You always look for a, like a, a deal where everybody wins. This one, clearly everybody wins in this deal. Um, and so we're super excited. And I, I hope that we're doing nine plus, you know, we're doing basically a billion dollars worth of real estate this year. I hope we do a billion dollars of real estate with JPI Windmaker for every year going forward. It's a great investment return. I think our, investment, our investors are, are really excited about it. It's a different model. You know, there's not any cash flow for the next three years. So they're not getting any money back anytime soon. So you need to get your investors okay with the fact that they're going to be, you know, sitting on this, we're going to be sitting on this money for a period of time. But at the same time, at the end, it should deliver a, a very large return for them, which they're super excited about. That's awesome. So Madeira is just kind of clicking along, doing really well. And and so in May of 21, we decided to say, hey, why don't we help out some brethren over here yeah. and start Rockwood? So from scratch, May of 2021, we've now managed 25 different properties under Rockwood, about 4,800 units. Today, we have 20 properties that we're managing about 4,000 units. But it's, it's been an incredible, fast hockey stick going up. Um, you know, it's led by Jeff Lowry, uh, who's just awesome at what he does. Um, and he, he will be the first to say the strength of Rockwood is really the strength of our frontline employees. And, that? and that, that was birthed by Madeira, but kept along with, with Rockwood. We also have the support of Madeira from the directors uh, or, or the VPs of ops, um, Casey and Katie and their teams, but we also added resource to specifically help us in Dallas, uh, in Christy Cardenas, and then in Houston, Angela Sears, so that we have that, that really that knowledge at that level that can both communicate to property, but probably more importantly, be a buffer at the owner's level, because that's a different, we're in a different business when we're dealing with not just one owner, Madeira, that we kind of all know and can have shorthand conversations with. We're managing for a lot of different types of people. We are. And, and, and I think iron sharpens iron. This is definitely one where I believe as an organization, we will grow um, internally, pr- process-wise, system-wise. And I think we're going to bring a lot of value to some people that Quite frankly, any of us, you know, anybody of them, it could be any of us. It was yeah. us at one point in time. Yeah. And, and that's been that's been re- very rewarding to me. There's a lot of the ways that they view the world that I, I think in 2007, 8, 9, when we were first starting to buy properties, we viewed the world. Um, and I think through this mutual relationship, we're going to help them to get to a point where they're even more successful which means that we'll have more properties that we can manage yeah. for the people who literally are willing to live within our values and do the things that we expect them to do. Yeah, and on that point, I think we had one group that initially, they brought us four, what I would characterize as very mismanaged properties. And this team was able to turn them around and position them all for sale at at the expected price of the, mm-hmm. of the owners. So that's just phenomenal. I, I really think Rockwood has set itself up in the marketplace to be that uniquely different management company. Great. Next, we'll move on to Select Title. And, you know, 2021, I think Select Title, they had their seats had to be about on fire. Certainly their copiers and printers were because they were just going gangbusters in 2021. And, you know, some people might think with the raise in the interest rates, have they slowed down? A little bit. A little bit. Not, not a lot. Not, not a lot. And the commercial side of their business has really picked up. Yep. So kudos to the team there. Um, they're also eyeing several different markets. They're they've they've uh, they're well down the road in Arizona for obtaining their agent escrow licensing. Mm-hmm. Um, they've they've hired here in Lubbock to also uh, cover some of the Lubbock market. Um, it, really support Arizona that also if, if something does pop up and then also help us with a lot of our our sales. Here's the deal. Select titles growing. Um, you know, and when we say growing, it's probably it's growing in footprint. Um, I think we've got a great culture, great processes, great systems, you know, always work to do. But it's a model that I believe we can continue to expand outward. And that's who we are. That's the kind of company that we are. So 
Dallas is definitely interesting to us. Arizona, obviously, for us to have a business development person out in Arizona, um, you're going to see us grow in those markets. And the cool thing is, like, you know, they're talking to people about they're selling assets and doing things. You know, they can also say, hey, have you heard about that company called Quaxed? Or that company called Rockwood or Madeira. You know, it, right. there's there's these interesting. You don't even realize all the the spider webs that kind of sit over all of our different companies. Yeah, so you can start with Select in just the commercial play, and then it spider webs to everything else that's, that's right. going on. Um, really cool. And 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 oh, by the way, I think they 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 effectively closed a four hundred seventy million dollar deal in June at Select Title. So yeah. that's that's pretty impressive. It's really cool to see how we, it's it, it's hard. We can't do this in, in an hour's time, but you know, we we could sit down and kind of break down like the the synergies that exist and how like the reason that they got a four hundred million dollar deal is because of things that we've done relationally. So that, that's and, over. That's over breaking some bread or maybe a, a, yeah. a liquid refreshment. And you can tell that backstory on yeah. that because it, it is fascinating, and it is true. And really the core or the foundation of the Madeira companies is relationships. Always. How they came together and also how they're going to grow. Next, we'll move on to Quext. And Quext has had an, a, a very interesting year. Uh, we just, exciting year. A very exciting year. So we, we completed a $63 million raise. Uh, and what that's going to allow us to do, so the, the Madeira founders, along with Thomas Mandry, have allowed us to get to where we are today. But for us to get where we want to go, at the speed which we want to go, we really needed to have a capital infusion happen for a number of reasons, and we'll kind of talk through those. But to have that completed, and again, it, kudos goes back to the other companies of the Madeira companies because it's it's the faith that that those companies have built with our investors that allowed us to go raise this money. Um, we've got a full court press on at 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 Quext for really taking our products to, to market. Yep. We've got nine products. We're really focused on four and getting them to market quickly. Uh, and that's our smart home or IOT, which we have on, on many of our Madeira uh, properties. We've had supply chain issues there that we're, we're about to remedy or at least really lessen in a significant way. We've got our digital human that's on Madeira properties and doing well. We've got our Connect product, which is our community-wide Wi-Fi, which is on in several, being added even further on Madeira properties and others. We've On that product, we're about to announce a teaming agreement with Charter Communications where their sales force, we've always sold their product where they are, where they have market share. Their salespeople are gonna start selling our smart home technology because as they've been out in the marketplace, that's been a resounding need that their clients have asked for. So that's exciting for us there. We'll continue to advance on our websites uh, product as well. So those four, smart home, digital home, digital human connect and websites. The other thing that's really got a full court press is integrations with other property management. Yeah, software. critical. We've got to have it done. We got to be able to integrate with Yardy and RealPage and all of them. And so um, we've had some breakthroughs in there. I think we have an optimistic um, roadmap through the end of the year to get us over the finish line on a lot of that stuff. 2023 should be a big year for us in the sales side. Yeah, we've added talent there. Courtney Denton comes to mind where you know she brings years of experience, not only in the industry, but also with those PM software, um, the integration. We, yep. Yeah, she has those relationships. So again, it gets back to relationships. So um, we also went out and hired what I would say, and I know you say it all the time, just the cream of the crop, top tier sales and support folks. We we didn't screw around. We went out and found and hired the best. I mean, quite frankly, feel like I've been like like I couldn't be happier with even Courtney. Like that some of the people who've come to work for Quex, it's it's it gives me goosebumps to know that that group has come together to help us out. And mind you, they're all new hires this year. Um, they brought a wealth of knowledge, but a whole lot of questions and challenges for us. It's really allowed us to really, I think, hone right. it, grow. Yeah, grow and, and get better. So we appreciate them. You know, Ravi, Rick, Barton, Mojack, or, or I think her formal name is Melissa, uh, Tessa, Haley, and Nicole, and, and, and others. And on and on and on and on. Yeah, and on. It, it's just awesome to see that growth and, and see that uh, that knowledge come into our organization. I think we're kind of running out of time on my part of it. So well, well we are, <laughs> we are. Um, this is so, normal in our world. So we're, we're let's let's go over to Viva then. Um, yeah, I, th I think real quick just to kind of wrap up Quex. I did an investor call last Friday with a group that invested you know quite a bit of money with us, and they were looking for an update. 
um, I spent an hour talking about stuff like just with quacks, just with quacks, so and I didn't really get to everything. Here. And so when you only say we only got like three or four minutes to cover quacks, like we we really can't talk. I mean, there there is so much going on, and it's exciting. We'll have to do a whole one just for quacks at some point. We can do a podcast. Yeah. Then it's not as much pressure because we're not live. Yeah, exactly. We can say uh, retake. <laughs> I think Josh, make us look good. Yeah. Um, so Viva, when you when Viva was acquired, it it, it really had one sort of sub market or or, or yeah, vertical. The, the, it was Latino a market. Latino digital bank, but the vision, as you said earlier, was always bigger than that. And today, it is already bigger than that. Yeah. You have. I mean, the whole thing when we did it was we thought we'd do. We, we wanted to keep going down the path of the Latino bank and Viva. Because we we bought into that vision when we we invested into into it, um, but we needed a router of currency payment rails where we can pay vendors and we can accept payments from residents. Um, the processes and groups that were out there just quite frankly were either extremely expensive or the processes and systems just didn't work. And it so, really didn't feel like a partnership. No, it, it was it was a win for whoever was providing that, but not really for our for us as a company or our residents. So I mean, so we, we'd ask all these questions, like, why is it like this? Why is it like this? And the answers we got is just because, just because, just because. And I'm like, oh. So then we meet these these great partners of ours here in Lubbock with Viva. We're asking them, can't we do this? Can't we do this? And, oh yeah, you can do that. It's like, well, why can't we? Well, just everybody everybody's trying to do the same thing. Nobody's looking at the way you guys are looking at it. So wham, you end up with this router currency thing, and then we. Partner with, you know, not partner, we, we created a product that our friends over Rent Dynamics are, are helping us sell called Rent Plus. Um, that actually is in the App Store today. Um, I think today, yesterday or today, it went in the App Store. So you can go and find the Rent Plus card, as well as the Viva First card in the App Store. And you can actually download it and actually get a card. Um, we're actually launching that to several hundred thousand people here over this month. 300,000. 300,000 people are going to actually get access to that card. And we've, we're expecting a penetration rate of 3 to 4%. In beta testing, we're seeing numbers that are significantly higher than that. And so, you know, I'm not going to sit there and like, we had to talk about scale. What if we scale faster than we think we are going to? You know, I'm a half class full guy, so those are the kind of things that I like to ask. But at the end of the day, it's exciting to know that we're getting out there with this product. And then I know what's on here, it's, which is, which th this, this classifies as, okay, where does this puzzle piece fit? Um, I would probably need a whole podcast for that, but through the, through the course of, uh, through the course of this whole stuff, we looked at, we, get, we had some people challenge us with student athletes and the, this NIL thing. And we realized that, you know, it's the wild, wild west. Um, what can we do to, what do we have already that we could do to help add some flavor to this whole thing and so we've yeah help, help both colleges or institutions as well as the student athlete themselves. as well as the fan as well as the fan. so we have now we have a it's a it's it's kind of under wraps we'll let you guys know it's called fan inc uh, we have a trademark brand um, it is a card meant for the student athlete where the student athlete can get it and we can do things like crowdsource nil money to their favorite uh, nil player um, we can generate an nft um, back to the, the, the fan for their for their donation. Um, we can provide um, tax withholding to the athlete. We can teach them financial literacy. We can kind of require them to go through an educational process before they can use the card, which helps with compliance. We can also provide reporting back to the colleges because right now the, the NCAA says, police yourself. Well, we all know that's going to change. So what can we do to offer that? We, we, the deal is, is we had all these pieces. We just had to put them together. Yeah, and I think it's a great example of, hey, when you hear of a problem, think about it for a second. And do we have something in our portfolio of companies or a, a, a process that may be able to solve a problem? And this was a perfect example of that. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's, it's exciting. It's, it's actually gotten, it's gotten picked up by some pretty big groups that are excited about it. And you're kind of like, really? You're excited? That's, that's cool. So I think, we've, I think we're on to something. And, and that's, I think, you know, I can I can draw a line back to what we're doing with all the other things that we're doing, and so there is synergies here that go beyond just you know us kind of messing around with a new product. Um, at the same time, like you said, Dave, I mean we're entrepreneurs. Right. We're we're thinking through challenges and we're trying to come up with real solutions. And when we do, we actually do something about it here in this company. Yeah. And, I, and I hope that challenge. I hope there's other people out there listening right now who are doing the same thing and look at us as a way. It's a company that fosters that kind of thinking. Yeah, and and just to look at Viva, I mean, their I think their total users is is like four and a half x um, since August the first, and that's across all those platforms, and that's only going to accelerate. You would think, yeah. Um, 
Same with the deposits, same thing. Uh, you might also, if you're going to a Texas Ranger game, you might also see Viva First out there. Yeah, we are. They are. They have partnered with. Uh, we we the have Texas Viva Ranger. Days there now. We uh, the, there's booths out at um, about Viva Tejas. The, the, yeah, so um, you know we we actually partnered with the Texas Rangers to get the word out on that. That's that's been exciting. Yeah. You know, so. I, I think before I get out of the way and let Rodney kind of step in, I think the one thing that I want to wrap up with is you heard a lot of stuff. You know, billion and a half dollars in acquisitions. I don't remember what the number was, but it's I think it's over a billion dollars in sales in the last 18, 20, in the last 18, 19 months. Um, we've gotten Rockwood has grown significantly and growing. We've got four different products at Viva, nine different products at Quex. I could do a whole podcast for probably two hours on what's going on at Quex. Select Title had a banner year in 21. They're on pace to match it in 22 with growth into different markets. All this is going on at the same time. Like from the same group of people like this isn't like we're not just celebrating one thing. We're celebrating a whole organization and the fact that each organization in its own way is having exponential growth, changing, changing the world that they touch. And that's that that's exciting to, to me. And I think it fits our values. And I, I don't doubt for a second you and I are gonna be sitting back here a year from now and it's going to be like, remember last year? Guess what we did this year? We may not be able to remember last year. <laughs> Probably not, but that's okay. But we, we don't do it without you. So thank you from the bottom of my heart and um, for, for everything everybody does. And I hope to be more available and get to see more of you here as we move into the end of this year and into next year. Uh, and I'll leave you guys and let you guys have Rodney now. All right. And any suggestions that you, you want to see in a podcast for Dave to, to do, send those to, to Josh. He'll, he'll keep, keep us organized on that. Cool. With that, and, and with Dave's thank you, I echo that. We couldn't do without you, our employees. You're the lifeblood of our organizations. That kind of flips us into, we've got Rodney Cates here. He's our leader of HR here at the Madeira Companies. And kind of want to turn the microphone over to you, Rodney, and okay. take us through. Great. Well, we're just going to spend just a few minutes about the employee uh, survey. And as you know, last year we did the um, uh, survey where um, we contracted with Swift Bunny back in the fall of last year, and the purpose of that, we really wanted to get your feedback and opinions of how things are going across all five companies. And so working with Swift Bunny, uh, and based on what you answered the questions, they gathered uh, four strengths or four themes. So we did not come up with these ourselves, Swift Bunny came up with these. And really when I think about these, Dave, it kind of it talks about the employee experience um, and because when we know there's a great employee experience, there's uh, great employee satisfaction, there's well-being, and then also when you have that great employee experience, the revenues are up. And you can see just based on what both you and Dave, the other Dave, talked about, um, there's a lot of great things going on. So really um, glad that we got to hear this feedback from you from the folks on the, uh, on the phone and the ones that took the survey. And you know, when you take the survey, just think about what's happened over the year, not just what happened yesterday. And I know a lot of times when you take a survey, you might think about what happened one hour ago, but think about what's happened over the last 12 months. So let's look at what the areas that Swift Bunny uh, put together that based on how you answered the questions. And so these are the things that we looked at that we needed to focus on during the last 12 months. And this is a journey. It's not one of these things where you can just flip a switch right quick and make it happen. But the things that look at were the advancement opportunities, understand career paths and growth uh, and promotions and value in employees by looking at comp plans and benefits and incentives, and then the in, uh, internal communication. And of course, uh, y'all have covered some of that information already, the things that we've worked on, but let's just highlight a few more of those. So let's look at employee benefits. So first thing that's listed there is when we were out recruiting, one of the things that came back was, can benefits start quicker? Because they felt like it was a recruiting uh, uh, advantage to do that. And so we made that change to start the following month after their hire date. Then we went back and added some voluntary benefit options the uh, LTD, voluntary accident, and critical illness. And then by looking at some of our benchmark survey, we looked at increasing the dental insurance maximum by $500. So now the maximum is 1500 
And then we actually um, doubled the life insurance and accidental death from 25 to 50,000 for all employees. And then during the last 12 months, we've sent out different emails about uh, Simple Engage. That's the United Healthcare Wellness Program where folks can earn uh, what they call rally coins and basically it's up to $200 in certificates or in cash doing different uh, wellness activities. And that's one of those things, you know, a lot of people don't like to do wellness, but you got to get out there and do that. And then the other thing what we did was um, we, uh, after we introduced our 401k, we also added uh, PFG, who's our uh, financial advisors, and they'll be glad to work with anybody to work on your uh, 401k plan. I mean, just just what, four years ago, we, we had no medical benefits, we had no 401k, and that's all been added, and then this was incremental in this last year. That's correct. And really looking at the data and saying, what can we do to help our employees? And correct. It's a, it's, it's really nice to see all these additions. Yeah. And it takes a lot of people to make this happen. It's not just one person, but uh, the HR team's been heavily involved in those activities. So the next one is looking at the employee relations and communications, and um, uh, we implemented Jostle with. Uh, uh, Sean and uh, Josh's help and Jacob and so that's been going and for those that are <clears throat> looking at that it's a way for company information to get out there it's the company intranet and if you want to look up a person you can go to that uh, on the left hand side of Jostle and look up people and also um, we have opportunities to recognize individuals so on the left hand side when you're looking at Jostle it'll show like birth dates anniversary dates work anniversary uh, and then the other day I saw different managers that had done some shout outs where people had earned some special certification, training awards, things like that. It's just a great opportunity to uh, recognize people. Um, and then we've done the salary surveys, looking at that and how it compares to ours. The merit budget uh, in April of this year, we moved it by 0.5%. And somebody might think, oh, that's not very much. When, but when you look at all five companies, that's actually a little over $1.5 million uh, in additional compensation. And then working with uh, Casey and Katie's team, we updated the job titles at Oil and Jeff too because we looked at using uh, resident services, just kind of getting more to the time of what's taking place in multifamily uh, job titles. And then we also created the senior levels. So that's another career path that a person can get uh, promoted and we've been doing those over the last uh, few weeks. Yeah, so that's fairly new. So look for a lot of those announcements coming out in, on the, on Joshua because there'll be some very talented folks that are being named as senior levels. Correct. And then uh, we've worked with uh, Maricela in converting our HR manual plus other policies into Spanish. That's been very helpful because we do have a lot of folks that uh, really English is not their first language and this has been very beneficial and we've got a lot of feedback from that. And then we've used the new seri video series, In Your Words, and really it's your voice. It's kind of like what, while we do the employee engagement, hearing back from you, but the, this video series, Your Words, is really allowing uh, people on the, uh, at the properties and the communities to talk about uh, work relationships. It talks about how they're working with residents and things like that. So if you miss those, uh, reach out to Josh um, Haynes and he can get those, but there's some real um, we have some Hollywood actors in those. I was going to say the only the only <laughs> downside was that we had some really good people on camera, and I was afraid to lose them to Hollywood. But uh, those were just phenomenal. Uh, the folks that participated in those, I, I, I typically reached out when you did them. But again, thank you. Uh, it was you, you really put into words what it means to be a Madera employee and what it means to you. Uh, to serve our residents and each other. And I, I think uh, the and each other is important for us to mm -hmm. remember. That's really who we serve first is each other. And then that allows all of us to serve our residents or our customers. Totally agree. And the same thing kind of applies to the good stories in Spanish. So we went to our uh, employees that have a Hollywood career and they're doing the yeah. good stories in Spanish. And that's been very beneficial. And then last quarter, we implemented the Madera Way. And so we honored nine individuals last quarter. And so right now, um, we're asking for folks to turn those in too. And so we're going to get some more great um, nominations and get those folks uh, a gift card for uh, going the extra mile.
And then the last two weeks, um, you've probably seen the podcast. If you haven't, the podcast is out there with both Dave's talking about diversity, equity, and inclusion initiative. And that's going to be our uh, touch base series for the this fall quarter. Yeah, and that's that that is an initiative, and that's a that's a journey that we're all going to take together, and it's going to take all of us to get to where we want to go. But it's it's probably always going to be that next destiny destination. We'll never really get there. We'll just always constantly move towards where we want to go. Correct. Um, let's see. Talking about recruiting and orientation onboarding it is so critical that new hires have that great uh, experience because we know that within that 90 days, if they have a great experience, the retention is really there and it stays. And so we've been making uh, strides in that area. Um, Also from feedback from leaders, they told us, hey, can we change the referral bonus instead of paying in six months, let's pay it in three months. So we listened to folks like that and got that changed. Um, We're doing a lot of different things with the orientation and onboarding that Lisey Daniels is starting to do. And then also um, uh, we created the employee testimonials because we're really, since we've done very well on our first year to do the uh, employee engagement, we wanted to capture that. So we've created about four or six different testimonials that we're actually putting out there on our Madera Way uh, website. So when a person goes and looks at a job, they can actually click on one of those employee testimonials and you know, get a flavor of what the work environment is here at Madera companies. And then the, the emails and the jostle postings for job openings, we heard that loud and clear. And so the, uh, Maricela sends that out once a month. And of course, you can also go into jostle and see the postings that's listed there. But also, it's a great opportunity to look at all those postings. You know, we've talked about all the five companies, but this is also a great time that somebody might want to go to another company. And, and we've had questions, uh, uh, individuals reach out to us that had questions about, hey, well, what if I go work for Select Title? How's that work? And just to let everybody know on the podcast, uh, all the benefits are the same. Um, so there's That's no right. change there. Yeah, and, and I, the thing I really appreciate about Jostle is it gets a lot of that traffic off of email, which many times can get lost as, as all of us receive a ton of emails just in the daily business. Mm-hmm. Um, so to have a repository over there at Jostle that you can go look at, at you, when you have time uh, and it's always there is really nice. So I appreciate uh, Josh and Sean for launching that, that for us. And, and I, I'm, I'm going to challenge myself to get a little bit better about starting there every morning to kind of see what's going on because it is a good reminder of all the good things that are going on, all the teammates that we could celebrate that day with either promotions or accomplishments or birthdays or anniversaries. It's all right there and easy to, to comment on. Yep. So the next item to look at is uh, that we've worked on is in the training area. And um, uh, you've already mentioned this about with Katie and Casey and their teams. And so we're uh, they're implementing the mentoring program. So I think it's going to be a great program where they're taking a new hire and walking them through a checklist on several days and uh, some of them are a 30, 60, 90 day checklist to get that person up to speed and being part of the team. The Emotional Intelligent Podcast, that was our um, touch base back in the spring. Uh, Very successful, had a lot of great comments on that. And if you're a new hire and you happen to miss those, they're actually in the library on Jostle. So you can go in there and uh, review those. So good information there, talking about the you know, empathy and self-regulation, motivation, and we had some different movie stars in that, too. Yeah, and some non-movie stars. (laughs) So, um, anyway, talking about employee growth, you've seen a lot of things that we've talked about already, um, and we're getting started on the DEI, which is the Diversity, Equity, Inclusion Initiative. But on those career paths, I know we've kind of mentioned a a few folks, and, man, there's been a lot of those uh, great promotions and just to kind of shout out some of the ones that um, say like director and above. So uh, you've already mentioned about uh, Christy at uh, Rockwood, but then we had recently with Monica and uh, Rachel Rachel. with the regional operations in the DFW and Houston area. And then uh, Lisey Daniels uh, moving to HR for the training development director. And then in Quex, we had uh, Clint Branch as the engineering project manager or director. So, 
anyway, we've had some great moves there. Um, and then I guess, you know, when you start thinking about um, we continue this journey, just because these are things that we accomplished uh, during the last 12 months, we are still not through. I mean, there's more things to do. I would do. say we've taken great steps. We've, that, we've, we're, we're never fully accomplished. That's right. And I know we've talked about one of our values, can I, um, never ending. And so we still got ways to go, but we're working toward it. And we appreciate the feedback that folks gave us on the survey. And so when you look at the next slide here, uh, next week uh, on the 15th, uh, Swift Bunny uh, with Josh Haynes, they're going to kick off a 30-minute little uh, uh, webinar talking about the survey that's coming up, what to expect. And then the fo following week on the 20th, which is a Tuesday, we'll start the employee engagement survey. And it is anonymous. It, uh, each employee gets their own individual email. And so you'll need to check your email. I know last year we kind of had some situations where some folks, um, I mostly in select title, it seemed like the email went to their uh, junk uh, folder, spam. spam. So uh, we've done some work on that, so hopefully that won't happen. But on September, September, can't talk, September 20th, you'll get that email. And be sure and don't forward your email to somebody because each individual person has a link. So um, you'll have to watch that. And then three weeks after the survey closes, and then in December 13th, we'll have another end of the year town hall with both Dave's and myself. And then we'll look at the survey results and look at what things we need to do for 2023 for the next 12 months and then uh, celebrate the, all the great things that's happened at the end of the year. Yeah, awesome. Well, yeah, appreciate all of your effort, Rodney, and, and the HR team. You've, you guys have really brought us some uh, stability around all the things that are HR, and it's it's oftentimes things that an organization can just put to the side and not ever make a priority. And you guys constantly are looking out for our employees and what what can we do better. So we really appreciate all your effort there. And for everyone on, we're up at the top of the hour, and I know I know to be a, to be away from your task for an hour is is hard. We truly appreciate you joining us today. Hopefully you can feel the excitement that we have for all of our Madeira companies. Uh, we've, got, we've got a crazy good ride ahead of us in, in all regards. We can't wait to, to ride along with you and, and see where this puzzle kind of fills itself out. So again, thank you for each and every one of you for what you do every day to help our residents, customers, uh, and each other uh, as we continue to grow the Madeira companies. Thank you all so much.